May I start with you, Mr. Weltman? How big is the demand you see both locally and internationally for surrogacy, and why people do it? Do you think it should be legal? Um, the demand for surrogacy has grown exponentially in the past few years, and particularly from China. I would have said a few years ago we had almost no clients from China, and now it makes up 30 percent of our international base. I think some of it has been the crackdown by the government on uh, Chinese surrogacy that was still going on despite being it illegal in South China. Um, and uh, once that began, people started coming to the United States to do surrogacy. Uh, but what about in the United States and worldwide? Do you know how many cases are taking place? For example, you count any number? And why people are doing it, not just about China, yeah, but worldwide? And do you think it should be legal from your perspective? Briefly. So uh, according to the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, there are about 3,000 surrogate births a year in the United States. I think that's a severe underestimation, but I don't think the number is huge. I think if people are coming for different reasons. The heterosexual community, which are facing diseased uteruses, uh, cancer diagnosis, absent uteruses have reasons to do so. There's the gay community that would like to have children that's now being accepted in many, many different countries. Mm. Um, and those are people who are coming to surrogacy. Um, and I think it should be legalized everywhere. I completely believe in it. I am a parent myself through surrogacy. Mm -hmm. I think it is one of the most wonderful, rewarding things for everyone involved, especially the surrogates. Compared to about 150 people who apply to our program every month, we have 1,500 women who I apply see. to be surrogates to our program. Many, many of them not caring about the money, but caring about the ability to give that gift to All someone right. else. I know, Ms. Ekis Ekman, I want to say something. Would you just hold it for a sec? I will let the Chinese guest, as our previous guest also mentioned about the Chinese situation, we'll let Ms. Tong to respond first about the Chinese situation. How, how would you read also Mr. Weltman's description? You know what, for me, I really oppose the surrogacy because it's against the nature, the, the law of nature, nature, and also it probably violates the ethics of the human development. Um, no matter, but, but the demands is there. So for me, the best way is, is to manage the situation, manage the situation in the right way, and then to protect the cho children first, and also the surrogate mother, mothers. Okay, it seems that Miss Tong is very confused at this moment. You know, <laughs> she knows the demand is there, but she doesn't think that it is the right practice. Uh, what about you, Miss Akis Ekman? Well, I have studied surrogacy for 10 years, and I consider it to be a violation of women's and children's basic human rights because in surrogacy, women are reduced to breeders, to vessels. They are pumped full of hormones and they are robbed of their children and they will never get to meet their children again. And the children also are denied the right to meet their mother for the rest of their lives. Mm. So obviously this goes against, for example, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, Article 7, that says that all children have a right to grow up with their parents. Okay. And all this, of course, is done for money. We're seeing that this industry is growing and growing, of course, but now we're seeing a shift that more and more states are also about to ban it, seeing that it's leading to trafficking and it's leading to the violation of human rights. Mm. Surrogacy, of course, is a very controversial international issue. You see that in different countries, different debates. In the U.S., for example, where Mr. Weltman is coming from, five states and Washington, D.C. have banned surrogacy, and yet some of the other states have not. Uh, 26 states in the U.S. are open to it, but in another 19 states, surrogacy are allowed with conditions, so-called. In France, in Germany, in Sweden, Japan, Singapore, any form of surrogacy is banned. In countries like South Africa and Russia, all types of surrogacies including commercial and non-commercial ones, are all allowed. India used to allow it, but since 2015, government banned overseas customers to seek the service among Indian women, and so did Thailand. In the UK, Australia, Canada, China, Hong Kong particularly, non-commercial surrogacies are also allowed with strict 
regulations. So, Ms. Eckes Eggman, I'm afraid what you have just said, uh, there's increasing number of places that have banning it is not necessarily the reality, but rather it is a very diverse picture that we are talking about here. Yes, but we have seen nations that formerly have been big destinations of so-called reproductive tourism, such as Thailand and India, that now have experienced big scandals in the surrogacy industry and that have decided to ban it. And the EU Parliament have passed two resolutions mm. uh, advocating the ban on surrogacy as it is an exploitation of women. So this rosy picture that uh, the industry here uh, wants to paint uh, of women who are doing this uh, voluntarily is not really true. Uh, we're talking about an industry in which women's bodies are reduced to uh, commodities and okay. children are reduced to being products that you can buy and sell and design yourself. Mr. Weltman, according to Ms. Akis Ekman, you have been propping up this industry. You have been violating women's rights and also those of the children respond. I, I couldn't disagree more. First of all, um, this is a situation in which the children in my program and in the programs in most of the United States are not deprived of connection to the gestational carriers. They their parents know who they are, they maintain a relationship with them throughout the surrogacy, and they maintain a relationship with them throughout their lives. My children are 23 and 21, they know who their surrogate mother is, they know who their genetic mother is, mm. and they have a connection with her. In addition, my children have been around for 23 and 21 years, and they have no issues that have arisen by virtue of this, because we have been open and honest with them from the very beginning. I think that the way the United States does this versus other countries is absolutely different. And that much of what was going on in India, where women were kept in housing, away from their families, right. taken advantage of because the numbers were tenfold, hundredfold what they would normally make, was a very different story and particularly okay. why places like India and Cambodia and Thailand shut it down and the United States is not. We think. I agree. There must be there, standards put in place to protect the rights of the women and right. the children. Is there a development stage issue that we are talking about here? Because you are talking about the development of these cases in the U.S. vis-a-vis -vis from developing countries, whether the commercial surrogacy have a lot to do with the latter. Uh, it's just a very interesting case. Even in the United States and some of the developed economies, you see case studies popping up from time to time. The very first one many people have noticed dated back decades. The Baby M case, as it was known, was the first court rule on surrogacy in the United States. Back in the year 1986, a U.S. couple asked a surrogate mother to give birth to their baby, but the surrogate refused to hand over the baby to the client couple. New Jersey Supreme Court ruled eventually that the surrogacy contract was invalid and handed the baby's custody to the couple through the father using the conventional best interest of the child analysis yet allow visitation rights to the surrogate mother in the 2014 rather an Australian couple also gave up one of their twin babies delivered by a Thai surrogate mother since the boy suffered from Down's syndrome. These have become very controversial cases. It has also led us to further debates, Ms. Tong, about the issue of surrogacy. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, let me ask you about this. Since we talk about the market, the uh -huh. demand, in China also, because now the second child is being allowed according right. to the family planning the policy, and many policy. couples are you know, struggling. How can we give a second child, have a second child? And though and then this technology is there. Mm -hmm. It's available and it's getting ever cheaper. And yet the thoughts and the social customs and the legal work, it seems related to possibilities, do not match with the previous two that we have talked about. Mm -hmm. Ms. Tong, how should we understand this very confused picture? If you're less confused than me. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit confused because personally, really, I strongly oppose such kind of thing. But then here in the reality, like in China, you know, the change of the policy related to family planning and also po 
population growth, you know, the family is facing this kind of dilemma. demand. Yeah, I mean demand. The society facing the dilemma. I mean, for me, when we talk about dilemma, means we have some kind of a value mm. there, saying this is not right. But at the same time, we say this is the reality, and people have that demand. And also, we have the, as you said, the technology and all those kind of things. And then these things can help them to to realize whatever. Yeah. But but then but the legal thing here, no one is there to say what you should do and what. You shouldn't do. That's exactly no. because this is putting exactly it into the gray area. As we all know, once right. it's into the gray area, first of all, there's not going to be legal protection for any party. No. And secondly, things like these are likely to continue because there are demands. So, Ms. Akis Ackerman, help us to understand your analysis about this stage of development. What to do? Make it gray or actually make it uh, very clear by legal works. Well, I think we have to separate uh, the demand for something and the right to something. Mm. Because just because there is a demand for something doesn't mean we automatically have to legalize that. You know, some people demand drugs, some people demand to kill other people. We don't legalize that. We legalize something because we know it's ethically right. So that should be the question. If the question is that it's illegal, but it's difficult to enforce the law, then the question should be, what can we do about this industry? You know, I was recently in Mexico where um, the authorities are trying to crack down on all the Spanish tourists that are going there to use poor women from the countryside as surrogates. Because what we see here is always uh, poor women who uh, feel forced during due to their economic situation yeah. to give up their children uh, for money but uh, and and I also react to the words of the industry representative here because he's using the term gestational carrier no she's a mother she's a mother she has been carrying okay. a child in her stomach she has felt that child move she has yeah. been throwing up she's had hormone changes she has had sleep difficulties and she has borne that child right. she is the mother and the you have no right to call her a gestational carrier okay mr weltman mm -hmm. well the surrogate yeah. couples are also experiencing something very dramatic, I guess, during the process of whole surrogacy as well, just to be fair here. Uh, Mr. Weltman, you want to respond to your counterpart? Yes, I do. Um, there is a very large difference seen in the United States between traditional surrogacy, which is the baby M case that you referenced, where a woman carries her own genetic child to term, and gestational surrogacy, where a woman carries someone else's child to term. Mm. You referenced a 1988 case because after that case, almost no traditional surrogacy is done anymore. That's right. Uh, subsequent to that, we have had gestational surrogacy, and the courts in the United States have consistently held that is a different kettle of fish. A woman does not have a right to a child she is not genetically related to. And from my perspective, your commentary about how there needs to be regulations, whether it's accepted only in the United States or in every country in the world, this is no different than saying to people, you can't have sex before marriage. People will do it anyway. People want children, and if they can't have them, they will find a way. So let's find a regulation that works. Let's do careful screening on the women who do this and make sure, as in my program, they are not doing it just for the money, and they are not poor women. Let's make sure that the intended parents understand that sometimes they may have a child with Down syndrome despite all the testing in the world, mm. and that's their obligation to take those children, and they want them. Let's make very clear what the legal work that necessary okay. needs to be done to protect the children, the intended parents, and the gestational carriers, and then this can be done because the world right. is opening its doors to this. The European court has repeatedly ruled in favor of this. Okay. We are running out of time, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, let me tell you, but, but I'm sure that debate will continue. And many words that you, all of you have said will certainly uh, provide more inspiration for further debates. Before we go, I would love to have everyone to share a sentence or two with us to once again state your opinion and also tell us why. And let's 
Uh, let's go with Mr. Weltman first. This is the most wonderful thing that has ever happened to me in my life. My children are here because of this. Okay. Uh, the woman who helped me have my children, I consider a goddess, and I treat her as such, as do my children. And she thinks it's the greatest thing she ever okay. did in her life. She is so proud of the gift she gave. This should be allowed. Okay. And also, Mr. Aki Sackman. Well, I would like to hear that from her mouth because I have talked to so many surrogate mothers that say that not a day passes in their lives without them thinking of the okay. child that they gave up because she's not a carrier. She's the mother right. of that child. She gave birth to it. The child, according to the UN Convention, has a right to her. Okay. And she has a right to her Ms. child. Miss Tong, final words. Based on, this short, based on this short discussion, I really wish it is banned. But facing the reality, since we cannot change the reality, I think okay. China needs negotiation.